Sutra. How can thieves put on my robes and sell the first come one, saying that all manner of karma one creates is just the Buddha Dharma? They slander those who have left the home life and regard bishops who have taken complete precepts as belonging to the path of the small vehicle. Because of such doubts and misjudgments, the meekness living beings fall into the relentless hell. Commentary How can thieves put on my robes? They don the clothes of a left home person and tell people, I am a Dharma master who can lecture on the sutras. You should all believe in me. And they sell the first common. They battle with the Buddha Dharma. They do business with it. All they do is think of ways to get people to give them money. They say that all manner of karma one creates is just the Buddha Dharma. They say everything is the Buddha Dharma. Dancing is Buddha Dharma. Drinking wine is Buddha Dharma. Making music is Buddha Dharma. These are all part of the Buddha's 84,000 Dharma doors. They are really smooth talkers. Smoking cigarettes is Buddha Dharma. Gambling is Buddha Dharma. You can do anything you want. They are lax even to the point that no matter what one might do, they say it's all right. They slander those who have left the home life and regard bishops who have taken complete precepts as belonging to the path of the small vehicle. If anyone calls them on it and asks, Have you taken the complete precepts? They don't even know what you are talking about. They don't even understand the five precepts, how much the less the eight or the ten or the ten major and forty-eight minor precepts. They themselves are not authentic left-home people. Their scope is very small and self-centered. Because of such doubts and misjudgments, limitless living beings fall into the relentless hell. They cause others to be confused, and they themselves basically do not understand. To begin with, the people who follow them had good intentions, but having become involved with such a messed up teacher, they end up in the same situation as was mentioned earlier. If one who is dazed transmits the delusion to another, when all is said and done, neither one understands. The teacher falls into the house and the disciples burrow in after him. In the relentless hell, there is no break in the suffering. One person feels the hell in the same way that many people feel it. With just one person in that hell, there would still be no space left over. And no matter how many people are in it, it's always just as full. One can never get out of this hell. So it's very dangerous to set up conditions for it. Sutra, I say that bishops who after my extinction have decisive resolve to cultivate somebody and who before the images of the first come ones can burn a candle on their bodies or burn off a finger or burn even one incense stick on their bodies will in that moment repay their deaths from beginning this time past They can depart from the world and forever be free of our flaws. Though they may not have instantly understood the unsurpassed enlightenment, they will already have firmly set their mind on it. Commentary I say that bishops who after my extinction have decisive resolve to cultivate samadhi and who before the images of First commons can burn a candle on their bodies or burn off a finger or burn even one incense stick on their bodies will, in that moment, repay their deaths from beginningless time past. These bishops are under proper guidance at the appropriate time and in the prescribed manner cut out a piece of their flesh with a knife and place some oil in the hole. Then they light the oil and are a living lamp for a Buddha, for the Buddha. Or perhaps they burn off a finger in the correct manner. Or they let one or two or three pieces of incense burn on their bodies, such as on their arm. 
Shakyamuni Buddha says that all the debts such people have accumulated throughout the time without beginning can be wiped away in that single act. They can depart from the wound and forever be free of our flows. Though they may not have instantly understood the unsurpassed enlightenment, they will already have firmly set their mind on it. They will have a decisive resolve and will not retreat from it. Sutra, if one does not practice any of these token renunciations of the body on the causal level, then even if one realizes the unconditioned, one will still have to come back as a person to repay one's past debts, exactly as I had to undergo the retribution of having to eat the grain meant for horses. Commentary If one does not practice any of this token renunciation of the body on the causal level, then even if one realizes the unconditioned, one will still have to come back as a person to repay one's past debts. If one doesn't do any of these acts of physical renunciation, such as making a lamp on one's body or burn off a finger or making incense burns on the body, thus planting a few good causes, then even if one accomplishes the way, even if one becomes enlightened, even if one becomes a Buddha, one will still have debts to pay back. One will have to come back as a person again and repay one's debts from past lives, exactly as I had to undergo the retribution of having no having to eat the grain man for horses. I had to eat grain man grain man for horse feed for ninety days in this life, Shakyamuni Buddha says. Why does Shakyamuni Buddha have to undergo that retribution? It had to do with a past life when he was a Brahman engaged in teaching 500 pure youths how to cultivate the way. At that time, there was another Buddha in the world. One day when that Buddha went on the begging rounds with the bishops, he instructed them to have the donors put a little extra in their bowls to accommodate a bishu who was sick and could not go on the arms rounds. As they returned from their rows, they passed by the mountain where the Brahman who was Shakyamuni Buddha on the coast ground dwelt. When the Brahman got a whiff of the food from their especially formed bowls, he became jealous. Who do those bold monks get to eat so well? Why do those bold monks get to eat so well? They should only be allowed horse feed. His 500 disciples all agreed with him, of course, dreaming in right. They are only fit to eat horse feed. After he became a Buddha, Shakyamuni took 500 disciples to a certain country to spend the summer retreat. On the surface, the king of the country gave them a cordial welcome, but after he allowed them into the country, the king would not make offerings to these monks. Eventually, a horse trainer in the country became aware that the Buddha and Bishus were not being given any offerings of food, so he shared with the monks the grain that he fed his horses. Even though the Brahman had eventually become Shakyamuni Buddha and his 500 pure youths were now 500 ahas and had been certified to the fusion, they still had to repay the debt from their past life. For 90 days, they had to eat horse feet.